I'm Khaled Ziada. I'm uh, one of the interventional cardiologists at the uh, Heart and Vascular Institute. Um, and today I wanted to talk about uh, microvascular coronary disease, which is an area of interest uh, for me and uh, a relatively new uh, area of interest and in research in, uh, in our field. So we know that uh, most uh, patients who have uh, coronary artery disease, it's caused uh, by plaque buildup and it affects the big arteries. And those are the ones that we treat with uh, uh, stents or we treat with bypass surgery. Uh, and this is the more typical scenario. However, over the last uh, uh, several years, uh, we are now realizing more and more that uh, this disease uh, can also affect uh, small branches that we can't even see when we do our uh, angiograms in the cath lab. And of course, these are so small that we cannot uh, uh, see, as I said, and we cannot treat with stents or do bypass on those. But uh, we have uh, now developed new techniques uh, and new uh, tools by which we can uh, assess this disease uh, and uh, diagnose it and uh, possibly uh, guide the treatment, which is usually medical in this case. Uh, the key is uh, to uh, think about this disease when we see patients. Many patients are told that they don't have coronary disease because their big arteries uh, don't have this, the typical plaque buildup uh, that uh, doctors are used to seeing. But the reality is that some patients, and this is more common in women, some patients have this disease that affects the small vessels. So they may be told that they don't have coronary disease or their symptoms are not because of heart issues or heart condition, but it, it might in fact be their heart that's causing their symptoms. And the tests and the tools that we have now, uh, we uh, allow us to make that diagnosis and guide the treatment uh, in the proper direction. Uh, it's a condition that affects, as I said, more women than men, but still can happen in men. Um, it's actually uh, not rare. Uh, it is estimated that up to 50% of patients who have uh, chest pain have some degree of microvascular disease. Uh, the risk factors for that are the same types of risk factors that we are used to uh, in patients with the typical heart disease, uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, overweight, uh, lack of exercise. Uh, and so the types of uh, conditions that cause the big plaque buildup in big arteries can cause uh, microvascular uh, disease as well. Um, the diagnosis, as I said, is not based on um, uh, the angiograms, but based on measurements that we use uh, during the angiogram procedures, uh, but dedicated measurements specifically to address uh, microvascular disease. And we also have other measurements to uh, consider the possibility of uh, spasm, uh, which is another uh, condition that can cause uh, heart uh, symptoms, uh, but not necessarily uh, easy to see on our standard angiograms. Uh, so the uh, direction in our field uh, right now is to uh, pay more attention to patient symptoms, make sure that uh, we study the microvascular uh, component of the coronary arteries, not just the large artery component and uh, have specific tools and tests that we do uh, in the cath lab to diagnose this condition and uh, direct the patient therapy accordingly. There is evidence uh, that uh, by doing these tests and by directing the therapy according to the result of these tests, we can improve patient symptoms and we can improve quality of life. Uh, and we don't have to accept having chest pain and not being able to address it in the proper way.